No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Sugar girl Gina Views. Almighty Suspect. And we got a legend in the building. Somebody yeah. who is responsible for documenting the new era of L.A. culture. Facts. He done worked with Mozzie, YG, Blast, mm. DDG, Blue Bugs, Blueface. And the list goes on. Yeah. Very long it's a, list. It's a long list. A long list for sure. Yeah. He has a, a very long repertoire. Nah, yeah, facts. Ronnie Lewis. Though. Yeah, facts. I want to say, Lewis, you nasty. Yeah, <laughs> Lewis, you yeah, nasty. Yeah, the GOAT. <laughs> he in here. Let's go. Man. What's nah, up? How you real. doing? It's a blessing to be here. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to be here on this platform. Suspect, no, we've been working since since the beginning. Man. And we've been coming to No Jumper on Melrose back in the day and shooting videos. So mm-hmm. to be here like this is it's awesome. circle. Yeah, facts. That's it only makes sense. Hard. We was talking before the cameras came on and um, you had mentioned, well, y'all both was talking about how you was probably like one of his first and he was one of your first. Mm-hmm. Pause. And pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she paused it. And from my, um, for what I remember, you were like a lot of first uh for a lot of people, for a lot of artists, mm-hmm. you was the person who, like I said, has been documenting the culture. Yeah. And the earliest video I can remember is the Draco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did a lot of work with Draco. It's like in LA at a certain time, it's like we were all coming up around the same exact time. It was yes. like it was like perfect timing. Like so that's when you was going crazy, like just starting. Frosty was just starting. It was mm-hmm. like Draco was just starting to really like make waves, and I was like right in the middle of everything, just shooting for everybody. So it's like I got a lot of people's like first videos, big videos, and it's just like yeah. even till now I've got to see different eras of mm-hmm. LA rap happen. So it's like it's amazing, it's dope, and it's like the whole time throughout, it's like we started, we were kids, you know what I'm saying? We so was it's young. like we growing yeah. up through this shit. So it's like it's dope just seeing you here now and then how far we came. It's just like it's a good story for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely crazy. Mm-hmm. Me and Lewis yeah. used to, I'm talking about Lewis to come pull up to shoot our videos. He used to make the beats, yeah. shoot the videos. And then Lewis was like so tight with us, bro, when we wouldn't even go home. I remember sleeping in Lewis' back seat. Nice, you know what I'm facts. saying? Then we shoot the next morning. We in the studio till four in the morning. We sleep in his car. Next day, we working like like that. Like we was outside just shooting. Nah, 100%. Every like, we, single was, day. we was so focused. It's like we was on the same exact goal. Like I was so hungry back then. I was like, bro, I'll stay out here every single day. Let's just shoot. And we be sitting there every day, rounding up the money for the video shoot, and then go shoot the video. And we just kept going back to back to back, just putting out work, putting out videos. And we was like, we was loving it. And it was just like, it worked perfect. Like literally sleeping yeah. in the car. Like we was really like just getting it in every single day, like working. That's like hard. true definition of just every day working. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. When did yeah. you begin? He said, I didn't know you was making beats, so he just dropped the yes. bomb on me. Yeah, that's so let's thing. go back of, to the beginning. How you get started? I really know, like know. they know I've been making beats for a while. That was like really how I started. That's how I got my name. So is that the tag? Yeah, yeah, that's the tag. Literally how you said it was exactly how it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd have made a couple beats for a lot of people. So it's like Pick and it's flavor, a yeah. cannons. Cannons, facts. Uh, uh, did you make black sheets? Yeah, I made that one. Hey, yeah. he made some of my street bangers, I'm yeah, telling you. A lot of Lewis, make the bangers and shoot the video. Facts. That is and hard. And see, a lot of people don't know, like, one take J to the neck, I shot that video that. and made the beat. Mm. So that was like, you know what I'm saying, his first real breakout. So it's like, I've been like behind the scenes for a lot of different artists. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, producing was the first thing I was doing, really. Like, I was producing, making beats for everybody. I would audio engineer. And then I just kind of picked up the camera. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the music industry, like, we all do different stuff. Like, I'm sure you engineer your music right now. And a lot of rappers, we just try everything. So I was trying videos. And uh, people kept seeing them, like, Yo, videos is hard. Like, I fuck with your beats too, but your videos is hard. And I'm like, eh, I fuck with the beats more, but I, right. but <laughs> it just naturally picked up and blew up crazy. Everybody started hitting me for videos, and I'm like, damn, like, I'm editing beats? so much, I can't even get on the computer and make beats no more. But it's like, it made sense. So I was like, you know what? Wherever people are feeling the most, that's where I'm going. So if people are rocking with the videos, I'm sticking with that. So that's pretty much what I stuck to. And obviously, it worked out for me, but. Beats is definitely a thing, like, I'm always going to tap back in, and artists will hit me up and be like, hey, yo, we need some beats, send a pack over, and I'll get back in there, and I'll make some beats, too, so. How did you start making the beats? Like, what age? Bruh, honestly, it's funny, bruh. People don't know about this, but I used to play a game back in the day. 
uh, off a of PSP. Mm. It's called like Tracks Pad, I think. And mm -hmm. it was just like FL Studio. Like you can make beats. And I was a little ass kid, like making horrible trash beats, but I was <laughs> feeling them. And I was like, yeah, I'm making these. So when I went to the computer and got FL Studio, I'm like, oh, this is just like the PSP game. So I literally picked up on it. And literally I was, you know what I'm saying, producing since 17, 18. And then just from there on, I was just going crazy with it. And when did you pick up a camera? A uh, camera, it just it happened like a little after that. Like, um, I was always in the studio with a bunch of different rappers. Like, when I really first started, probably at 18, I was uh, working with Joe Moses a lot, actually. Mm. And we was just knocking out beats and beats. And then every now and then I'd bring a camera around and he'd be like, oh, do some video work for me here. I'm fucking with it. And then other artists, they would be like, oh, yeah, bring out your camera. And then it turned to the point where everybody started asking me to bring the camera. So, I started bringing the camera, and I'm like, wait, I'm doing more camera work than video work, and that had to be around when I was, like, 21. I'm, like, 26, about to turn 27 now, so it was kind of around there. So, like, some years after producing and knowing all the rappers, I picked up the camera, and since I already knew everybody, it was easy. It just spread like wildfire. Just, like, I had relationships with all the rappers already, so when I started shooting videos, people were like, oh, yeah, automatic, let's get one in, so. Mm. Did you know how to use the camera already, or was you just carrying that Yeah, I, see, I know how to use it, you know what I'm saying, like, back in school, high school, I had, I was in, like, little video production class, mm. and. I was in one of them classes. Yeah, exactly, so <laughs> That's it's like, I, know I, how to edit now. I knew my way around, but even, I'm always learning new stuff, like, back then, like, even to this day, every month, like, I'm learning new stuff, I'm creating new color profiles, like. It's nonstop learning type of thing. So it's like back then I was uh, really trying to pick it up. But even now, like I never think I know everything or everything's fully done or how to use a program. I'm always trying to come up with new stuff. Right, you could always learn something new. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. When did you start charging? Um, honestly, like I was charging since the beginning. It was, was just nothing though. Me, yeah, hey, we I'll know. Keep it me, yeah. And, <laughs> me and me and uh, the unspoken one. Yeah, we used to be doing whatever sure. we could do because no, Lewis wasn't playing. Yeah, oh. he was gonna thug with us and yeah. he was gonna stay in the trenches with us, but he wanted his money. Nah, that's a fact. He, so so we would have to scrounge around, do whatever yeah. we could do to get the bag, and he just and he just driving us around like, yeah, niggas better get this two fifty <laughs> nah, by the end of the day. No, no, real talk. That's literally how it was. Like. So I rock with them. I'm like, bro, I need the bread, though. Like, we driving around every day. I need gas money. We got to make it work. Like, I'm here rocking with y'all every day, so let's just get it. So they get to it, and I be driving around, and boom, pick up some money. They go there, pick up some money. All right, we got enough for the video. Cool, we going to start shooting. So mm -hmm. it's like, I always been charging, but it was like literally like 150 back then. So it was like mm -hmm. nothing. But um, yeah, it's just like I was charging from the get-go. I already knew. I was like, oh, yeah. People gonna have to pay for this, you know what I'm saying? What's the first video you remember? Sorry to cut you off. Nah, the first very video, first one. Bro, I don't remember the very first one, but like the ones we were shooting were like the very first ones, like mm. that was getting posted to YouTube and getting views and so ours. Yeah, that's not nah, literally hundred so percent. That's was the hard. First one. Yeah, mm. for sure. Viral. And okay. then from from working with y'all, that's kind of how I branched over to working with Draco. And then uh, once I started linking up with Draco, it was just going crazy with that too. Mm. And then. Once I started working with, you know what I'm saying, all y'all, it's just everyone in LA started hitting me up and that's when it started spreading. I feel special, y'all. Nah, thanks. <laughs> nah, real talk, bro. You had a hey, that's love. Nah, you had a big role to play with everything. And I always give my kudos. Like you, you know what I'm saying, Frost, uh, Draco. Even after that, I started shooting with famous decks during like the SoundCloud era. Mm -hmm. And he was going crazy. Like you was taking off with yeah, that. Yeah, we was going we was shooting videos like literally just as much. And that's like the thing, like the work ethic is what separated me from a lot of people and what gave me my name and how people saw me. Because they were like, bruh, Adam would literally tell you, he was like, bruh, I didn't seen you like three times shooting videos this week on Melrose. I'm like, bruh, I'm getting to it. So it's like, we always had a relationship even back then. That's why I was always, always here at No Jumper. You'll see me back in vlogs in 2016 mm -hmm. shooting videos. and He was in the first one. I think it's me, you, yeah. Famous Dex, and all. And we was walking down Melrose, and Adam walked up on us. Yeah. You know, we would always prefer to call Lewis because Lewis, he going to drop whatever. He going to mm. pull up, and he going to get it done. That's so hard. we would yeah, always facts. prefer to call him because we know he's coming. Yeah, 100%. So was, this is like a yeah. full circle moment then. Nah, Shout out to Seth for bringing you through. Is, yeah, it was perfect. Circle. That's why he hit me. I'm like, man, this is perfect. It got to happen, 100%. Man, because he's going crazy even right now with DDG. You yeah, are doing fact. your thing. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. Good looking. And I seen some shit with Offset. Yeah, Offset. Yeah, work with Offset, Gunna, Wiz. I was like a childhood hero getting to shoot with him. Wow. That was That was dope. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm at the point where I get to 
pick and choose who I get to work with. And I could literally listen to an artist, hit them up, like, let's work. And they're like, oh, yeah, I've been checking out your stuff. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's blessed position for sure. Mm, that's fire. Yeah. Now that you're working with these major artists, and mm-hmm. I know we just talked about the people you started with, what mm-hmm. video that you shot would you say was your breakout video? Breakout. Mm. It's like it's two different like levels. Like LA breakout right. probably was like the Draco impatient freestyle. Mm-hmm. I shot that video and that that was one of those songs that it would kept on re blowing up yeah, every yeah, year. Yeah. Every year he got into some, he would go to jail and it blew up even more. He'd get out, it'll blow up even more. And that video just kept carrying the views kept going up over time. And that really like I think stamped me as far as like LA people knowing my intro and seeing that. And it's just like, as far as everyone else, like other rappers, it was probably the uh, Moonwalk and the Calabasas with uh, DDG and Blueface. Okay. Yeah, That was like a big one for me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Moves That's going fun. crazy. I was trying to do some research on mm-hmm. you. And you know, you got a clean record. You ain't. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, I do. I stay out the way. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? always people, been low key. You yeah, see, people, super low. Anybody that work with me, they tell you, like, damn, Lewis, like, he shoot the video and leave straight afterwards. But it's because, like, I have such a like respect for people. Like, you yeah. send me your money, like, I'm not going to be sitting there smoking, drinking, which I'm going to keep it professional. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go home, get back, dump the files, get to editing so people know, like, okay. I could count on this dude. He a businessman because, you know what I'm saying, music videos is like where I'm starting now, but I eventually want to move on after that. TV shows, movies, whatever. And, you know what I'm saying, I want to be able to use this portfolio for whatever I do next. Mm-hmm. So it's like all these business relationships I'm building with everybody, I take serious. And yeah. it's just like, no matter how big you are, I'm going to give you full respect. So No, that's factual. I've never, I can't remember a time, and he's, we sleeping in his car, and I can't remember a time where he ever was drunk with us, doing any type of drugs with us, smoking with us, nothing. Mm -hmm. He the responsible one. He made sure we would get home. Nah, for sure. You feel me? He the responsible one. Yeah. Definitely. What was your upbringing like? Like, where does that, where does that come from? Um, yeah, my upbringing is just like, I was always, like, when I was young, getting into fights and stuff, and. You know what I'm saying? And I that's kind of why I was like this now is because I've already experienced, like, all the drama, all the craziness. And everybody go to a certain point, hit a wall, we're like, I ain't on that no more. Mm-hmm. And you know what come with it. Like, having a certain type of energy and, you know what I'm saying, having a big mouth, it only leads to a certain type of way. So I like to stay low, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, duck off and just try to focus on positivity only. So it's like, when I'm working, it's work, it's positivity, no bullshit. So that's what I be on. You got to give us one of them, like, untold stories of hip-hop, some crazy shit that, that went down in, like, a video shoot or something. I got, I got, Studio got session. One. I got too many stories. Get, you got to like, give us your best one. They, they're, they like, all horror stories, though. Like, I'm trying to think of some good ones, but honestly, it's like... Can you tell us about the time you had a shootout? I mean, not you had a shootout, but, but um, when, when you were shooting a video yeah. and then something broke out? Yeah, no, nah, that's happened a few times, and it's like, that's the thing when you shoot in L.A., like... It's like you shoot for game bangers and all this. Anything can happen. You got to yeah. be on point. You got to be coherent. I don't be on drugs. I got to be aware of surroundings. But I seen the video. You was in the hundreds. I'm like, oh, yeah, these the niggas I, I went to school with. I'd be, <laughs> I be everywhere. Literally, like when I started, my price was so cheap. Like no, people that barely started could afford to hit me up, and I pull up by myself, projects yeah. wherever, and just shoot. And because I, I was so hungry, and I just wanted it so bad, and I was trying to just make an impact on a culture. I'm like. If you buzzing, I don't care where you from, where you at. I'm pulling mm-hmm. up. We going to make something, make a, uh, you know what I'm saying, a movie. But, yeah, shootouts definitely happened. There was one time I, we were coming out of a club, and um, you hear arguing. When you hear that, you already know it's bad when you hear the club. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, shots pop off, and they get louder, and it's going crazy. And I just duck down, run to the whip. But, unfortunately, stuff like that happened, you know what I'm saying, especially in L.A. Like, you can't dodge that, whether you a video man director producer whatever it's like you got to be aware and all situations are dangerous so it's like mm-hmm. i take everything serious but i've seen a lot of stuff happen a lot of fights break out a lot of shootouts and um yeah it's unfortunate who was you walking out the club with um i don't remember it was like a local artist but um it was honestly like i think like riverside somewhere like random club mm-hmm. and it was just like when you really don't know the area don't know nobody you'll be like oh hell no i'm out of here so i went straight back to the whip I was in Riverside with Ash Bash one time, 
and um, it was a shootout, just like yeah. that. Walking out, walking out the function. That's it how goes it goes up in the IE. People yeah. think it's sweet. It definitely, it definitely, yeah. definitely goes up in the IE. Yeah, there's there's places. It's like I think IE has like, you know, what I'm saying it's just like any other city. Um, you got the San Bernardino and rough areas, but you got nice areas like Rancho too. So it's like a lot of people will get con construed or mix those two. But it's like it's areas depending on where you at. It could be horrible or it could be, you know what I'm saying, very nice. So what city like, you go to high school in? I went to uh, high school in Upland, but I'm originally from Ontario. But I went to Upland for football. Mm. Like, I was always into sports. I was out the way. And, uh, yeah, I used to play football. So that was, like, my main thing growing up. Ah, so you was big on the sports. Big yeah, on the big sports. on the sports. That's what I was on. Yeah. Was that your dream as a kid? Yeah, I guess. Like, when you don't know nothing else, like, I played sports all my life. That's why I was like, I guess I'm going to just play sports forever. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying, it gets to a point where you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up something else, do something else. And that's when I kind of started hanging around with rappers and artists. And I was like, oh, I'm going to start producing. So that kind of just caught my eye more. And it was more me. So I knew I was like, yeah, I'm going to head down this path for sure. Okay. What's some of the... um? So I know you got some big records that you produced for, for some famous people. Do you got any ones that's not coming out? C can you tell us about something like that? Like some big records you produced that's not going to come out? Yeah, I got uh, yeah, I got one in the vault right now with uh, the baby and Dex that they made. It's, so, it's such a crazy joint. It's so fire. And I was just talking to the label. I'm always checking like, are we good? Are we getting clearance? And they just hit me like, yeah, it's not coming out. I was like, damn. damn. But that's that's the thing like people don't understand about. That's why I was like, I'm good on being a producer because you can have so many tracks with artists. Like you already know Thug got a thousand songs. Right. And there's probably 60 producers that got a song with Thug and don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to hit the album. It's never going to come out. So I knew when you know you got these tracks with people and they don't come out, it's so frustrating because yeah, it's just that gotta like, be a different type of feeling. Yeah, it's just it sucks, and especially when you starting to make traction, you start counting like, okay, I got this one, this one, this one, and none of them drop. You like, damn, like I gotta start <laughs> all over again with other artists. But like with videos, it's very rare you shoot a video and it don't come out. Yeah. So, all right. So you yeah. knew which lane you wanted to go to really get your craft out there. Yeah. Exactly. Hundred percent. It's so crazy, like, me finding out right now that you was a producer, because I used to be mm. like, he one of the only videographers with a, a tag. Nah, facts. <laughs> nah, for sure. That makes sense, because mm. you were a producer. Yeah, and I just kept the name going, because since I made a name, and I was like, you know, I'm going to just keep the name and cross over. I'm not thinking yeah. I'm only going to do this, but... Yeah, it just, it happened real naturally, too. That's being, a good part. Being that you're so successful with the videos, do mm. you have any desire to just go back into producing at all? Yeah, definitely. Like, depending on what artist, they'll hit me up like, Louis, bro, I need a beat. I know you make beats. I'll be like, yeah, I got you. So it's like, pretty much artists I listen to. Like, I mm -hmm. listen to a lot of LA music. So a Blue Bucks hit me up. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to send them a pack. Mm -hmm. Suspect hit me up. I'm going to send them a pack. It's like, people I listen to their music, I'm always excited to like, any type of way I can get in the music with them, I'm going to do it. Producing, shooting a video, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. What What's your favorite artist to work with right now, 2022? My favorite artist? It got it got to be DDG just because he's so consistent. Like, mm. me and him, we were, like, on the same page with everything. And with him, like, vlogging and putting out content so much, it's, like, full circle. He always hit me, we need a video. We need to shoot this. We need to go in here. We need to do that. And it's just, like, damn, it keep me consistent as well. So it's, like, you know what I'm saying? Having somebody you can lock in with. That's always working, always putting out content, always shooting. It's like it only benefits you too. Helps with the work ethic, helps with the content, everything. How did that relationship start? You and DDG? Um, it's a funny story actually. I was shooting a um, a video for Famous Dex, and uh, DDG actually came into the studio. I guess he was getting a feature from him, and mm. he was like shaking everybody's hand. And he was playing, oh yeah, this DDG, whatever, whatever. We just got done shooting a video. So as I'm walking out the studio. I see a dude pulling up in the I-8. I'm like, who the hell is this? And it's the same dude I walked into the studio. I was like, oh, okay, that must be that dude. He must be a good rapper or whatever. So I went back home, and literally, like, a day later, he DM'd me like, hey, bro, I need you to edit a video. And I was like, nah, bro, I only edit stuff I shoot. And he was like, bro, I'll pay you whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, And I was like, nah, bro, I only edit what I shoot. Like, if you want a video, just hit me up, and we'll get one set. And he hit me up. And then after I saw, like, the numbers on that video, I was like, damn, like, this dude really got like viewers coming in and he started to keep locking in and that relationship just went crazy. Like we just locked in and ever since then, four or five years later, like we just keep keep going. Have L have LA politics ever um 
interrupted, you know, your work with artists or anything? Has, nah. it, has it ever been a factor on who you decide who you want to work with? It's like, it's never been a factor because people know at the end of the day, I'm here to make art. But it's like, same time, like, you got to be cognizant of what's going on. It's L.A. And some people can give you a pass. Some people won't. So it's like, I try to always, like, just think about what the situation is, what's going on. Like, I don't shoot diss tracks or I try not to if I can avoid it possible. Mm -hmm. I just try to stay out the, the negativity. And with L.A. gang rap, it's like, there's only so much you can not shoot, but... um the fact that I shoot for everybody, I feel like it makes it so like, hey, he not choose side, he shoot yeah. for everybody. Right. Like, and this dude, I make art. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I fit in the same category as some a graphic designer or a producer or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, we just here to make the artist better, and that's what we focus on. All the other stuff really don't got nothing to do with me. Like, like right. I said, I'm cognizant of it, but I don't get involved with it. I don't game bang. I'm not in the street life. I'm just a businessman. So people know that and they respect it, and especially at the point I'm at now, like. People know who I am. They, I pull up and it's nothing but respect. And you know what I'm saying? That never really gets involved with me. Mm -hmm. I think it's also how you carry yourself too. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You don't, yeah. you, you, I, I've never seen you like, oh, like when, when it's somebody's hood day, you didn't shot for, and then you'll mm -hmm. post them and be like, shout out to the Wooty Woop. Like, you don't, yeah, you keep nah, yourself 100%. away and you just mm -hmm. stay business savvy. So I think it, it, it's kind of better like that because you carry yourself a certain way so people can't throw you in that box like, oh, he fucks with X, Y, and Z. Like, mm -hmm. nah, he fucks with everybody yeah. and he work with everybody. Yeah, fact. It's honestly, it's like, it's like, I don't carry myself like this because I'm a video director. It's like, this is how I really am. So it's like, it's like having common sense. So you know, like, okay, don't don't promote this type of stuff because, you know, these people watching, these people watch, everybody watching, mm -hmm. and everybody going to feel some type of way no matter what you say. So you got to be smart. And it's just like, you can only help so much, but it's like, if I can do everything I can to stay on the work and positivity, that's what I'm on. That's it. So you ever had to tell a nigga I can't shoot this, this video because it's a diss track? For sure, for sure. Tell I, who? Come on, man, you gotta tell us who. For sure. like, <laughs> nah, like really, like so many big rappers they let me know, like, hey, bro, I got this diss track. I said, eh, nah, I can't do that, bro. Like, come on, they be like, bro. And, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like especially if it's like you dissing somebody I work with or I'm yeah. kind of connected with. What's what's stopping them from feeling some type of way and be like, Lewis, come on, what's going on? Right. Like it's common sense, so it's like. I'm like, bro, we could shoot any other song. Like, let's try to stay away from the diss tracks. But like I said, if I know it's a diss track, I'm not going to do it. But What if it's an M? An M? Yeah. Mm. See, now we talk. Nah. <laughs> nah, it's the same thing. You got you to gotta stay by a certain code, especially L.A. You know, L.A. Yeah. ain't playing. Right. So you can't play I'm, that shit in L.A. Exactly. I'll take it very serious. So. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you was telling everybody how you shot for me, yeah. Frosty, Draco, Ralphie, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, R.P. Draco, yeah. he gone now. But um, do you have do you have any last um memories or, or last moments that you spent with Draco? Yeah. I was actually uh there the the night he got killed. Uh we were shooting a music video for uh Gorillas and Nuns. And uh like the last happy uh interaction we have is Soon as he hopped out the car, I'm like the first person he saw. And Draco, he's like, sometimes he gets in moods. And so when you when he happy, like you know it. So he hopped out the car, he dapped me up. He like, yeah. And I'm like, damn, like I love seeing Draco so happy. Like he was so happy to perform that day. And it's like the energy was so hype. Like I just love and him hopping out the car, seeing me first, dap me up. I was like, okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause that was my first time really going to a show with him. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Obviously, that shit went all the way south, and it's like it's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sad. So RPM for sure. Other than that, do you have like any other really memorable moments? Yeah, it's like really some of like the the best music videos and moments I have is like with artists that like I looked up to. Like earlier, I mentioned Wiz. Like Wiz was always an artist, like a childhood hero, and you know what they say when you. When you go and meet your childhood hero, they like, be careful. But mm -hmm. he was everything that I thought he was going to be. He was hella cool. We were sitting in the studio, uh, met him through Sosa Man. We were shooting with Sosa Man. We was in the studio with him. And we watching like Tropic Thunder, like dying laughing. Mm. And uh, it's like the interactions were so cool. And he hit me up a day later like, oh, yeah, uh, we trying to shoot a video, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn, for sure, I'm with it. He pulled up and he just let me direct. He let me take control mm. of the video. He let me do everything, and he was just, like, really cool with it. I sent him the video. He loved it, and it was just, like, so easy to work with, and he was, like, everything I thought he'd be, so. That's fine. That was definitely, yeah. like, Shout out moment. to Wiz. Yeah, for sure. That's dope. 
have any of these like higher profile type niggas and tried mm-hmm. to run off without mm-hmm. paying? See, that's the thing. What, 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 I, what I do, like, you can't run off. Like, you're not going to get your video edited if you run <laughs> off. Like, it's going to sit in the vault and it ain't coming out. So it's like, people don't really run off on me. But, like, with labels, when you deal with labels, they take forever sometimes. So that it's invoice. like, I'm going to be like, hey, man, like, y'all got to speed it up if y'all want the video a little bit sooner. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, nobody try to run off, especially at this point in time. Like, it's, it's come in respect. You know what I'm saying? What would you say is more convenient to work with? Is it independent artists or major labels? Mm, honestly, independent artists, because with major labels, you're going to, I sit on the phone talking to all the label people and managers more than I talk to the artists. So mm. it's like, if I could just lock in with the artists, what do you want for the video? You have this in mind. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do this. And stuff gets done way quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the bigger ideas you got, you got to get the labels involved uh, just for budget reasons and all that. But I like locking in with artists, like, just on a personal level. That's kind of how I blew up, like, that running gun style. Like, mm-hmm. pick up your camera. I'm in town, L.A., for two days. Like, just pull up on me. And it's, like, natural. Like, I feel like when people see that on the video, it comes off real authentic. And, like, that Moonwalk in the Calabasas video, that was literally just a party. And I was having to stop everybody to shoot scenes. And I feel like the energy in the video just like you can feel it you can know mm-hmm. like okay this ain't stage i ain't have to tell everybody all right start dancing or you start throwing money it's just natural it just happened that way so i feel like those are the best things to watch on camera because it feels authentic yeah organic yeah, um, for sure. to go back to draco real quick mm-hmm. before my last interview with draco he said that there was a company who reached out to him to do some sort of documentary mm-hmm. on his life yeah and um i remember in that moment thinking like these is the whites that mm. and you know contacted him. I don't know if who got involvement in it from the city, but I feel yeah. like that story can't be told without a Louis you nasty, without uh, a voice too fact. hard, right. Kenneth Wynn, people who yeah. actually is from LA who, you know, been around these artists and things like that. So I mean, I don't know if, if anybody reached out to you about that or whatever, yet, but, but I feel like the I'll, story can't be told without yeah, y'all. I definitely want to be in there, but people gotta realize like like Draco specifically, he get out of jail. The first thing he do is he hit up a videographer immediately. Like I'm seeing him before a lot of people. Like right. yeah. as soon as he touched down, he like let's shoot and let's work. So it's like, you know, we got a big role to play too. Like just yeah. shooting videos. I'm a, and after so many videos, I'm around him a lot. Like I can see his personality, get to know him. So it's just like. Definitely, like, the stuff that we did, that's his passion, was yeah. doing music, shooting videos. Like, that's what he got excited for. So to be a part of that is, is super dope. Mm-hmm. He, I would say, is one of the most consistent artists that we've seen in a, in a long time. Yeah, 100%, for sure. And people can be consistent in the content. Content can still be poor. And mm-hmm. Draco was that's putting true. out good quality music. And then, you know, y'all capturing the moments yeah, and exactly. it's good content. And that's really why I was so excited to lock in with him. Like, he was literally my favorite rapper growing up listening to him. Yeah. Like... I was just like, oh, I got to shoot a video for Draco. So when it, when stuff fell in line, I was like, oh, yeah, we working. So like I said, being in L.A., I listen to all the artists. Like Even now, all the up-and-coming artists, I'm listening to y'all. So it's like when I hit y'all up, it's probably because I'm playing y'all music. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's time to lock in and get it going. So And a lot of people don't do that, and mm-hmm. for, especially for you to be at the level that you are mm-hmm. and you still DMing up and cupping up and coming rappers that you like from here listening to, you know what I'm saying? That show yeah. how humble you are and that you really love this shit and it's not just for money. Yeah, you no, know? that's mm-hmm. a fact. And it's just like the way I think about it is I, I look at myself as an AR. Like, let's say Cole Bennett. Cole Bennett shoots a video with somebody, he blows the artist up. Right. We'll never hear about this person. He shoot a video for him, they blow up. Like Jack Harlow, I never heard of him before. That video with Cole. And Cole literally blows people. I think he did that with Lil Sky. So it's like video, video directors have a different role, I think, now. Where it's like we can low key like harbor artists and, mm-hmm. and let them blossom. So it's like nothing I love more than getting the new up and coming artists and letting them pop. Cause there's gonna be errors that happen. And if you get stuck in the error, you're gonna get left behind. Facts. So mm-hmm. I'm always looking forward, looking for the next young artist to to boom bloom and blossom. And I'm gonna be right there, like, let's get it in, let's shoot the video, let's get it going, get the career popping. Cause with any artist, whether they big or not, if you do good, I do good. We yeah. on the same team. Mm-hmm. We on the so I no, I want nothing more than a young artist to to get a platinum plaque, get a bunch of views, cause I'm a part of that journey as well. So anybody, no matter who you are, anybody could blow up. Any artist before they was big, they was small, and people work with them, and that's how they got to that point. So me understanding that, it's like I don't care if you don't got a lot of views. I could tell a talent from you know what I'm saying non-talent. 
So it's like artists I listen to, I'm like, yeah, they got it. I'm yeah, going to start locking in. That's treat people on your way up how you mm-hmm. want to be treated on your exactly, way down. Exactly, exactly. You that's a good a dude because that's very important. Like a lot of people, they come up and they kind of forget about where they came from mm-hmm. and the type of the level of artists that got them where they are. And they'll just be like, oh, well, if you ain't yeah. money bag yo right. or Lil Wayne, you know, then Lou, I'm not fucking Lewis with you. Lewis yeah. answer the phone anytime that's hard. I call him right now. Yeah, to fact. this day, I just shot with Lewis like six, seven months ago. Yeah, anytime I call, he comes. Yeah, for sure. It's just one of those things like, you know what I'm saying? Because of the rappers, y'all let me live my dream. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Because of artists like you, like locking in all the time. Like it's creating me to a point where I could do this every single day. This is my career. It's my job. It's my passion. And I get to do it. So it's like every day I wake up, I'm giving thanks. Like appreciate the guy. appreciate all the artists locking in all the time and just allowing me to create videos. Like every time an artist hit me up, I get excited. I'm like, here we go. It's like an artist with a... Blank canvas. Like, you making history. Yeah, nah, facts. And it's like, sometimes I got to stop and look back and be like, damn, I guess I did do a lot because I'm always so fo- focused on forward and what I'm going to do next. When I stop and look back, I'm like, wow, you have, have done a lot for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't think people consider how much the videographer is um, in tune with the artist mm-hmm. and how much you moment. around. Like, you yeah. damn near like family. Yeah, honestly, it's like a lot of these artists, you know what I'm saying, we'll have deep conversations with them. We'll have honest yeah. conversation. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like anybody else that's around and I get to tap into the creative mind of an artist and they're like, I want to do this and kind of get in this mood because in this song, I'm kind of expressing this. So it's like, I get to help them get that next step of creativity. They did the part where the song comes in hand and they got to trust me to expand that vision into the visuals. And if it matches what they're saying in the song, they're going to mess with it and then it's going to help all the views and the content come alive. Right. We got an idea in our head and mm-hmm. we tell it to Lewis and then mm-hmm. in a week and a half, it's on y'all phones. Y'all, yeah. y'all get to see the thoughts that we have in our head. We tell it to Lewis and he figure out how to write up a treatment yeah. and he puts it out in motion. Making yeah. it come to life. Yeah, for sure. Because mm-hmm. you got to think like a lot of video ideas, all I'm doing is listen to the song. You talk about this. Okay, let's include that. So it's like... I got to be in tune with the music in order for the video to come alive. That's the only way. Mm-hmm. You play a, a major role in these um, artists' lives. Mm-hmm. And especially, like I said, we're telling the whole story. Yeah. And I think a lot of videographers and producers don't get love for the role that they play within yeah. the culture, the hip-hop mm-hmm. culture, and, you know, the role that they play in these yeah. artists' lives. Yeah, give this man his flowers. Like, yeah. I, no, always, I, I, I always text Lewis and try to give bro his flowers. No, he because do, he if do. it wasn't... For Lewis, it's like, mm-hmm. who was really going to deal with me and Snow sleeping in his fucking car, <laughs> nigga? You feel me? Yeah. And working with us constantly, yeah. the price that he giving us, the mm-hmm. time that he's spending with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shows real true dedication. You know what I'm saying? So for you really sure. got to get this man as far as why he's here. Because if it wasn't for him, a lot of us wouldn't have be able to get our ideas how we wanted them and when we wanted them. Yeah, for sure. Now, I appreciate that. It's like, for me, just being a part of the bigger picture, that's enough for mm-hmm. me. Like... Just saying I had I can be stamped in LA culture and had a, something to do with these artists blowing up, like that's more than enough for me. So yeah. it's like being being at a on the phone call ready to move, like I'm always going to be, especially for suspect artists I locked in with, new artists, whatever, and not even from LA anywhere, because it's like my ear is always to the music industry and it's like I'm trying to put my footprint in as where wherever I can. So this nigga always been a high hit. For sure. <laughs> bro, I'm going to be honest. Hanging out with him and Snow, bro, is literally the most, like, ridiculous thing possible. Like, we keeping it we keeping it very, like, normal conversation. Them boys is crazy. Like, literally, like, yeah, this it's bad. You it's see bad. how he been acting up here? Yeah, I have. Man, he wilding out. He wilding out. But I ain't going to lie. That's always been his personality. He's not putting on. That's literally yeah. him. So it's like. I'm trying. When I saw that, I was like. Suspect. But it's like, go, nah, right? nah, 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 facts. Nah, I see you. So yeah, no, nah, yeah, facts always been like that. But yeah. I'm, I'm trying. We growing. He, I know. Yeah. Lewis can attest. I was way worse. 2016, 2015. Sure. You wouldn't even want to be around us for sure at all. Yeah. We working. Real, work real knuckleheads. Real knuckleheads. <laughs> but we was all young. Everybody go through that knucklehead phase. And like right now, I would not have energy to put up with y'all. Y'all was too Facts. crazy. Yeah. But back I wouldn't then, have energy to put up with y'all. Nah, literally. Shit. But back then, I was so hungry. I'm like, fuck it. We go get it in like no matter what. Like, <laughs> we locked in for sure. Oh, that's love. The, um, the girl, she's a, there's a girl, she's a TikToker. Um, mm. She went viral for the, uh, you better come get one of these chicken salad. 
Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Nah, I never heard that. I was I a young being on TikTok. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, but. she went viral on TikTok. Mm. She's a, a very viral soundbite on TikTok. Mm. And Google offered her $500 for her sound. Mm. Has any big companies tried to play you like that? Um, Honestly, like, no. Just because, like, I get to control what price it is. Like, yeah. when it comes to these videos and these labels, I get to tell them what I charge. And most of the time, there's no discrepancy. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was producing, I would get more of that type of stuff. And that's it's hard being a producer. I give respect to producers because it it's like you always fighting for your credit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you'll see somebody blow up with your song. You don't even know. And this is, you know what I'm saying? When you're young, you don't know nothing about the distro kid and everything. So it's like you can, people could get away with stealing a lot of money from you with with uh, if your distribution not set up. So mm -hmm. definitely got to get that right. Facts. But um yeah, with video, that's why I like doing it so much. Like, I'm controlling my credit. Like, when I I edit the video, so my logo is going to pop up first before anything, before you hear the artist, mm -hmm. the beat, whatever. So it's like me being in control of my own branding and making up the price, that's why I was like, okay, yeah, this makes more sense. It's a lot of rappers watching right now mm -hmm. that want to know how much. What's the starting rate? You know what I'm saying? The thing is, like, it depends on what you're trying what to you do. Want. Yeah, what it depends you, on what you want. A, he'll pull yeah. up with it all yeah. and, and really give you the the, the, the works, yeah. or he'll give you, you know, it's still fire, still but he'll fire. give you just, you know, like, yeah. you know, keep it real cordial, keep it light, but still how you write. It all depends on Facts. what you want. Yeah, I try to I try to work with as much artists as I can, so I'm going to work with most budgets, but it's like, I done did big budgets, 40K, whatever, and we got 70-man crew, but if you like, bro, I need one location, I need three hours. Just pull up with the camera, make it saucy. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna work with you. Give me, you know what I'm saying? 1500, 2000 range. We can get it going, get a location for you. Maybe get you a model, make it look good. Cause I'm not gonna pull up. Oh, you bringing the bitches it. too? No, Lewis get you right. You know what I'm saying? You bringing we, the bitches in the car listen, too? Yeah, we got the cast. We got the cast. <laughs> you got the money? Yeah. Lewis you know what gonna you bring the right. You bringing the props? You know what I'm saying? We will pull up with a whip or two. You know what I'm saying? Make it right. But yeah, honestly, it's like I try to work with everybody, so I don't want to cut off. A certain amount of rappers because I'm yeah. trying to charge too much because you know what I'm saying there's enough bread to go around for me I'm like I'm good like so I can take a thousand dollar hit to work with you know what I'm saying fifty percent more artists mm -hmm. and for me that makes more sense because I'm looking at it long term than short term right. buck type of thing the relationships last longer than exactly the for sure is your first question what's the budget um low key yeah Hell what's yeah. the budget what we doing man what you want so like, they say I got three fifty. Nah, we can't leave them on scene. Don't you know even what I'm hit, up. Hit, up, hit up, hit up your auntie. Tell her you trying to get a Ronnie Lewis video. <laughs> see if she throw you a couple extra bucks. I ain't gonna cut it, but you know what I'm saying. It's like I, I respect people that will save up a lot of money to shoot me because I know it's yeah. expensive. I get it. You know what I'm saying. And it's just like at the same time, you got to pay for what you want. You know what I'm saying. You get what you pay for. So I'm not gonna bullshit. You. I'm gonna get you a quality product. So what mm -hmm. you pay for, I respect it, and we gonna make it happen. That's what it'd be on. Yeah, yeah. Real niggas. That's yeah. fire, though. For sure. Um, what about movies? Movies, yeah. That's the that's the end goal, really. It's just like, when I think about movies, it's like, when you watch a music video, you're sitting down for two, three minutes. And it's just like, in a world where our attention spans so quick, mm -hmm. you can have somebody sit down for two or three hours and stop their day yeah. to watch what you're doing, watch your art. That's a big deal. So it's like... I definitely want to get into the movies just because I love watching movies myself. And you know what I'm saying? That's a different type of bag, yeah, too. It's like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They start mm -hmm. throwing around them hundreds of millions of type prices. Yeah, so. that's that network bag. Yeah, nah, facts. So, nah, honestly, that's that's the end goal for me. But I'm going to still shoot music, music videos for as long as I You're can. You're still and, young, too. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, there's directors that's like 60 years old. So yeah. I can worry about working on movies later down the line. But right now, it's like, I'm just full focused on helping out the the music industry specifically. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. There's um there's some kids who have been making really good music videos mm -hmm. on their iPhones. Yeah. Have you ever attempted to to tap into the iPhone? Music I videos? have not, but I have seen the quality. Um, yeah, it's it's different. It's scary now. So it's like people everything can right on your phone. Everything on your phone, but it's like that's why you got to keep on reinventing yourself. Like yeah. mm -hmm. just holding up a camera that ain't enough. You gotta you gotta come with more sauce. TikTok, you can get crazy effects and filters. You got to figure out something else. Yeah. yeah so it's crazy. like, that's, I like that though, because that gives me opportunity to separate myself from other people. And I got to the point where I'm at right now because of my creativity. So when 
iPhones and cameras start getting cheaper with better quality, that just gave me a challenge to be like, all right, I got to come up with something new. I got to put my stamp in somewhere else. And I think it's also good because we got so many people shooting videos now, so many cameramen that it's like shooting a music video is like expected now. Mm -hmm. Like you drop a song, people asking when the video the coming video. Out. So it's Sometimes like, they dropping a song without the, with, I mean, dropping a video without with the, the song. song. No, mm -hmm. 100%. So it's like, I've had labels literally tell me like, listen, we're going to shoot a video to every single song. I think Beyonce dropped the album with all music videos or yeah. something. I think the world's changing. It's a visual on that. album. So it's like, if anything, the market's getting better for uh, people yeah. like me. Facts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, is there a conscious decision when you edit in to put mm -hmm. that signature on there? Because your videos, like, mm -hmm. I I know a if I come in halfway through a video, I know RPL. it's your video. You see that? Yeah. I know that signature. Nah, facts. Yeah, nah, it's, 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 it's exactly. one like transition where yeah. it's like you triple the, the rapper, like whoever it is oh, rapping, you'll like yeah, triple yeah, them or yeah. double yeah. them or something. Nah, facts. Yeah, that, I definitely try to throw my I sauce think in I there. I've and... been one of the first niggas you did that for. Yeah, that's mm. a fact. When was at the big crib and then you had the three of me yeah, coming out Yeah, that's that's how I know I'm watching one of your videos. Like I don't yeah. e I don't need to hear the tag. I don't mm -hmm. need to see the intro. I know when I see that that that's one of your videos. Yeah, and that's like a, that. Yeah, I was about to say that's like another version of my branding. Like if I feel like I created effect or I'm the first one to bring it to light, I'm gonna keep implementing it so people know. Like if I use it once and people copy what I do and they use it a million times, people ain't gonna know I did it. Yeah. So I try to make sure you gonna see it, you gonna know I did it and I'm gonna put my stamp on it. And mm -hmm. so like effects and stuff like that, we, you know what I'm saying? A lot of artists are big on effects. I try to come up with something different and really know like, okay, when you get Ronnie Lewis, I want this type of effect, mm -hmm. this type of coloring that you do. And that way when people come to me, they already have a good idea of what they want. Mm -hmm. So we always on the same page. Yeah. Tell me this. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like in the, I would say like the early 2000s, like, you know, when Rockefeller was heavy doing videos, mm -hmm. um, Murder, Inc. was heavy doing videos, yeah. you notice that there was usually a storyline mm -hmm. with, the, with the music videos. Sure. And now, in, you know, in this time and age, storylines are literally like completely removed. It's just it's drugs strippers money and you know change and stuff do you think that even makes a difference do we need storylines or is that something that we should yeah. bring back to the videos i think we always gonna need them storylines but i feel like back then the music was a little different you know yeah. what i'm saying like we the the music that has storylines back then it's the same type of music that would have storylines now i just feel like the more popular songs it's just like the those type of songs, the drugs, guns, whatever mm -hmm. there is no but, story um, mm -hmm. exactly there's no story but there's also like an element that I feel like separates today's videos from old videos is the fact that it's like, you could tell it's like an amateur shot it, but it's like, you know, it's real. Right. It's not staged. There's not 17 people back here with lights on you. You know, this is really happening. It's like, I feel like the first artist that made that popular was like Chief Keef. Raw and uncut in yeah, the house. Yeah, watching the old Chief Keef videos in the house, like... You were like, this is hard because it's raw, it's uncut, it's because him. Because it's like before that, every video that you mm -hmm. saw, you could tell that it took a lot of money to make mm -hmm. those videos. I feel like yeah. people like you need to give more credit for making it more accessible to artists yeah. like us. Because in like 2005 and 2006, 8, 9, mm -hmm. watching these like Dipset and Lil Wayne videos, yeah. you're like, bro, I know this video cost so much money. It's Joel's right. then walked around the corner, shit blowing up behind yeah, him. Nah, it's fact. 10 people. You know what I'm saying? It's for like sure. a whole lot. So it being an artist is you looking like damn I gotta sign or I won't even have no yeah, video nah, that's a fact you know that's what I'm saying fact. so people like Lewis made it more accessible for you to yeah. be in your house be like I wanna do this let yeah. me find somebody around me get in contact with them and do it mm -hmm. and you gotta think it's just like how everything changes like the time is different like you can't just put out a music video and then sit for five months. You probably could do that back in 04. You can't do that now. Like, yeah. you shoot a music video in one week, people are like, they stop watching it. Where's the new video at? Yeah. Like, the way our world is, like, you got to keep up. You got to keep dropping videos. So, like, you go spend 50000 on a music video, that's not going to last two months. People's attention span is the same. Mm -hmm. You got to keep coming with stuff. So, it's like, people like me allow artists to keep on dropping content and keep that flow going. And, you know what I'm saying? If you want to keep dropping music with videos, you got to keep fronting that money. So people without a budget, they don't got that. So you can't just keep getting high budget videos all the time. Sometimes you got to get a quick running gun in. If you do a freestyle, like people don't even really want a full budget for that. So it's like, that's where I kind of fit in. Big artists in, in town for a week, I'll go pull up on them. You know what I'm saying? Knock some stuff out for sure. Yeah. 
I know you said your end goal is to do uh, movies, mm. but what's like the ideal production? Is it like a is it a biography? Is mm. it a, a a movie with a storyline? Is it like a documentary? Yeah, it's probably it probably be a movie just because that's I'm I'm into movies. I watch movies a lot. Uh, what genre? I watch everything, but I really fuck with like war movies because mm, it's too, like like three hundred. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like, Troy. Yeah, shit I like, like I like shit that's based on a true story because mm-hmm. when you watch it, you get even more into it. You like modern war movies or ancient war movies? I like both, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like anything like war movie related, I'm rocking with. Especially, but like I said, especially ones that are based on a true story, like this the Saving Private Ryan's Black Hawks Down. I'd be on those. I'd be mm-hmm. loving those. So it'll probably be a war movie, honestly. Okay, fire. Would you be scared of any of the backlash? I remember when um mm-hmm. when Benny Boom did the All Eyes on Me movie mm-hmm. and the Black Twitter tore him up. See, that's the thing with me. Like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. And I'm not, if I'm hopping into a lane that's not my lane yet, yeah. I'm gonna make sure I got everybody around me that has been doing it. Mm-hmm. So when I pop in, it's not all on my back. And that's kind of the thing about like big productions and doing movies. It's like you got so many people around you. Yeah. You don't need to put all the bear on your back. You yeah. just put in your sauce, your storyline, or whatever, little tweak it. That way you can still come with a certain type of quality yeah so yeah i want to just jump in and just try to do it all myself i make sure i got people that been doing it and been dropping uh movies and get with a good production team so everything come out right that's super important to have a team of people and i think that the audience they kind of forget that there's multiple people who work in these departments yeah. who it's not just all on a director yeah a show like raising canaan which is they damn near doing time travel they got the props down pack all the way down to the cars that people drive yeah. into, the Jordans that niggas is wearing, mm-hmm. the the food, what's happening on the TV, the newspapers. Yeah. Like that is very, very that's real important. Yeah, facts. It's it's a team effort always. Yeah. Like, um, if it's a lower budget video, I'll probably, I'll probably pull up me, maybe a a couple other people. But mm-hmm. big budget, just know there's gonna be, you know, what I'm saying at least twenty people working on your video. I might have two different people editing your video helping. I might have a visual effects person throw their sauce. So it's like, when you see those productions, it's never just one person, you know what I'm saying, directors will get a lot of credit and stuff like that, but it's a lot of people behind the scenes. I don't work with people that's worked in big movies, Forrest Gump and stuff, working for me, just doing the lighting and stuff like that. So it's like, definitely like a humbling experience. And when you get around these type of people, you understand like, okay, these people been doing it like, definitely respectable. And it can't work without somebody else. Like, if, mm-hmm. if I didn't have these people knowing what they were doing, because sometimes they come to me like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, I think we should do it like this. And I'm all ears. I'm like, cool. All right, let's do it that way. And we'll do a take. I'll be like, that, yep, that looks good. So I add that, you know what I'm saying, intelligence to my bag. And, you know what I'm saying, that information gets passed around to make everybody better. Yeah. For the videographers that look up to you and that's watching right now, mm-hmm. tell them what's three things that a good, videographer needs all right first thing you need is hustle grind you're not going you're not going to make it if you're sitting behind your computer you got to get out there and work like suspect was telling you i was sleeping in the car literally because we were shooting every single day Mm -hmm. and we was on it like if you ain't got that drive you're not going to make it uh two would be um your your brand when might include your style you got to find your identity what's going to make you different you know what I'm saying? You could be inspired by somebody, but if you copycat somebody's flow, you're not going to pop. Anybody that got a name for themselves is because they did something a little bit different. And it might not even be an effect. It might be an idea, a certain way you open up a video. Um, and three would just be um, always just focus on getting better. Never think that you know everything. Never think that the video is good enough. Never think that, okay, I did this. I can kind of stick to this. You got to push yourself. Like even for me, I got to push myself to keep on buying new equipment, buying new lenses, trying out new programs. I've been using this program for five years and I'm doing good, but like, nah, I got to go sit down there on the computer for hours and try to learn this new program just to get better. So it's like, really, it just come down to that drive. If you really care about it and you really care about it as a passion and not just a job, like all those things will happen naturally for you. 
You such a good dude because I'm so happy yeah. he didn't say a camera, a laptop, and a, yeah, and a hard drive. Nah, <laughs> nah, facts. Never let you know. That it's is hard. the game. A, nah, facts. Appreciate it. That's he, hard. He just laced y'all. He just laced yeah, y'all little man, niggas with y'all game. Sony cameras at the key, your little cannons. <laughs> he just laced you. Yeah, a lot of people ask, what kind of camera are you, what kind of camera are you using, bro? What kind of lens? What kind of editing software? I'm like, bro, it's more than that. Like, right. I just shot next to people with the same exact camera next to me. And it's like, it's going to come out different. And it's because. I focus on the little things like I can shoot probably a better video than somebody with a cheaper camera because I understand composition, yeah. lighting, all that stuff goes into it. And it sounds real cliche, but honestly, like it means more. I had to learn that the hard way, you know what I'm saying? Going through the game, always trying to focus on what camera, what lens, when really it's like how you shoot it, what angle and getting all that stuff is way more important. Hmm. You think your good eye came from experience or from what you learned in school? Uh, it's probably both, but mostly experience. Like, we, it's like an artist. Like, you just gotta have an eye for it. You gotta have a talent. Like, I could pull up and an artist be sitting in front of a brick wall. Like, I ain't got an idea, bro. How are we gonna make it work? And I could sit there and be like, All right. So you talked about this on the song. How about we have you talked about touching the sky? Okay, let's have you stand on top of the brick wall, face up, and we'll have the sun hit behind you so you silhouette it out. Like, you gotta have that type of like artistic Ooh. mind to kind of like make stuff come alive. So it's like. Just like an artist is able to sit in the studio and freestyle bars, I'm able to freestyle an idea on spot. And most of the time, most of my effects and stuff I do are stuff I think about on spot. So it's like, you got to definitely have that in you. You're going to inspire me to become a, a music video. Yeah, you can do it, man. You <laughs> can do it. Yeah, I can do it. Sure. I'm about to go get a camera. <laughs> I'm going to call you. you Suspect. Can do it. Come shoot. Let's yeah. get one in. You feel me? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of that, you know how, how producers, they'll, they'll like tag team on mm -hmm. videos, why yeah. don't videographers do the same thing? That's a good question. It might just be because of ego. Because hmm. it's like- It'd be um, videographer beef? I don't think it'd be beef, but it'd be ego. You know like how producers like, collab? Like it'll be three yeah. producers That's what I, on the same I beat. Need, I why need no the, videographers I need the that? Ronnie Lewis, Voice yeah. Too Hard, and Kenneth Wynn. Why don't they Let's do that? I need that. that. No, I Let's need that. For sure. What now, is that's that? a good idea. I don't know. I guess it's not been done before. You know what I'm saying? We work with people, but other big names, like, I would definitely be open for that. Mm. I would Ronnie love... Ronnie Lewis, Jerry Production, you know what I'm saying? Ronnie Lewis, Cole Bennett. What's the I'm guy that there. does um, Blast Stuff? Blue? I think his name is sure. Blue. Um, Something like that, yeah. But I would literally... That's why I was saying, like, when we talking about mm. people telling our story, telling yeah. the, the West Coast culture story sure. of this new era, because, mm. yeah, um, we are losing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I just think that at some point this shit has to be documented and we have to talk about it. We yeah. losing our legends too fast. It's, no, it's and fine. it seems like back then, I mean, I'm not at all these shows with artists and things like that, but it just seems like back then it was just more footage. Remember the, the show backstage? It comes on Netflix and it's like um, it's like different concerts and stuff like that with like DMX, mm -hmm. Snoop and yeah. um, Jay-Z. They all are on this, you know, one um, mm -hmm. one show, or whatever. But we need y'all, cause y'all are the ones. Y'all, y'all have the experience with these artists. Y'all have the the footage, and y'all are the people who can really tell these stories. Like, no, it's a fact. Like, even after uh, the Draco situation, I went back and for like three days, I just looked at all the old clips we have, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. I'm looking at stuff like, damn, nobody even knows we got these clips. I'm looking yeah. at him being goofy and little funny clips, and it's just like. If I could figure out some way to put this in uh, a medium where I could show people all these good clips, like, mm -hmm. it'd be awesome. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got so much unreleased footage of artists yeah. and videos and stuff like that. I definitely got to figure out ways I can utilize that. Y'all sure. got to do it. I know um, Kenneth Wynn has hella stuff in a vote with Nip. Mm -hmm. And he'll, yeah. drop, he'll drop certain stuff, you know, every yeah. now and then for a birthday or, you know. And it's just like, y'all are the ones. Uh, I'm sorry to put all this on y'all back. Nah, I'm, nah, I'm sorry, but y'all we'll got to tell that story for, nah, the, for us. Because if y'all don't tell the story, and no disrespect to nobody, but it's mm -hmm. going to be them little, you know, motherfuckers who not built like us and ain't, you know, cut from the yeah. same cloth that's going to be telling these stories. And it's going to be lies and shit in there, which mm -hmm. we already see with a lot of mm -hmm. video, you know, reaction videos and things like yeah. that to certain situations. But y'all, at some point, I need like all of y'all just to get, together and nah, just sure. do something i just feel like that unity it gotta it gotta happen all the way around because yeah. i feel like even with artists like you know what i'm saying that unity has never been there like you'll get certain people that click up but full city unity we don't have that yeah. and it's just like i feel like once we get that all around the board like la music will yeah. jump to the next level 
and it's just like the politics get involved with the everybody collaborating in that certain time. So right. it's like I get it, but at the same time, it's like once you're an artist, if you focus on music, let's get it going. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah. Let's let's get everybody collaborating. I know uh, for Shoreline Mafia, Greedo and Draco, they had like a little collaboration going, but it's like that's not it's not, not big enough. We need everybody. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Getting together. There's definitely, I think there's there's space for um, somebody to, you know, for y'all to do that for our era, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Because, um, I mean, what, what it would be like the next, what, 15, maybe 10 years to where that type of content is supposed to be coming out. Yeah. And I think one thing that's lost right now with shows and things that we're watching is no, like, behind-the-scenes type shows. Yeah, that's true. And that's why I even... Uh I try to tell artists, like, get some vlogs in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because people want to see that. Like, yeah. people love, and I, that's why I'll even, like, take clips in the video and just play a raw clip just because it makes mm -hmm. it more personable. And um, I know, like, Ralphie, I know he'll do, like, some vlogs every now and then. And it's like, people love that. People want to see that. So I tell artists all the time, like, you know what I'm saying? Get a camera out, even if you shoot it yourself. Like, people want to know all this background information because... You know what I'm saying? Everybody's time here is limited. Yeah. Time as a big rapper is limited. And it's like, you might not notice it, but people want to see everything. Yeah. People want to see your day to day. And you might just think, I'll just get up. This is normal for me. But people like get motivated by that. They get inspired by that. They need to see it. And you know what I'm saying? You might just start the next artist booming or next big YouTuber booming just from your work ethic. Mm -hmm. uh, member behind the music? What was that? Behind the show, behind the music. I, I don't seen remember it. that. You remember yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember behind the music? No. Nope. Was it called behind the music? I have no clue what you're talking about. I don't know. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Nope. You the one love BET. Y'all remember inside the label? <laughs> Where are these shows? Fuck no. Where are these <laughs> shows? <laughs> I was watching. I was watching MTV Dance. Well, I was watching I, MTV Dance. How old are you, niggas? I'm 25. 25. Man, if y'all remember 106 in Park and of all of course, that, y'all yeah, yeah, remember yeah, behind remember the that. music. You talking about them little side shows that they had on BET? I don't remember that. Yeah, I, don't I remember barely that. remember Rap City. Facts. You don't what? I barely remember Rap City. Barely. Like so, barely. Um, behind the music, basically, it would tell those like untold stories of hip hop and the I things heard the story that were untold. Going on. It's just remember, remember when they just did the Death Row Chronicles. I know you're talking about. So on it's, BT, it's on, sort of on like YouTube, that, though. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I know what you're thing. talking about. Okay. It's sort of like that, like where they just telling you like stuff that was happening behind the scenes, right? Like yeah. during that moment, like now nah, you will be perfect for that because you could yeah. tell yeah. certain stories about me and Snow that other people might not yeah, know. Yeah, nah, that's yeah. a fact. You feel me I, behind the music. That's so funny. I, I got saying. too many behind the scenes stories with y'all, mm -hmm. and it's just like, yeah. I got, I got hella stories behind the scenes, so that would definitely be dope. I can get that going, an artist-to-artist type of thing. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be fire. We need something like that, man. Yeah. Like, we, we we need something like that. I think that what, and I would hate for this to happen, but I feel like the direction that we're headed towards in the next few years, the kids that are fans of these people now, mm. there's so much stuff they're not going to know about. Yeah. And a sure. lot of that, too, could come from how accessible these people are because of social social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the artists back in the day, they didn't have social media. Yeah. So it was kind of more interesting to get these untold stories and shit like that. But now you could just watch it on somebody fucking yeah. IG story and, yeah. you know, know exactly what, what went down at the function See, and all like that. Nowadays, it's reverse. You will kind of blow if you have a mystique if they don't know about you mm. because everybody mm. is so in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, like like XXX. He yeah. kind of cracked because we had no clue about him. Yeah. We just seen the, the mug shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of a mystique because we're all in your face the, the yeah. weekend, all the time. The weekend kind of was had that mystique. You know, so it's like, yeah, when they don't really see you, it, it kind of works reverse now. So even it would still be good for somebody like Lewis to, when you do capture those moments and you do maybe drop little sprinkles of it, maybe like once yeah. a year or six months, that'll mm -hmm. build somebody's mystique too, you know? Yeah, facts. Well, thank you for kicking it with us. We yeah, appreciate it, man. Me. Legendary for sure. Like we had to, man. You the coming in here off sure. all fly and shit. Yeah, I had to. I had to. I had to yeah, look good. Really for I've been waiting glued. for your hat to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> no, we good. We it's on. It's, it's stuck on. Yeah, I got this thing glued on. It's got yeah. a clothespin on the back. I was wondering. I was like, why this thing my hat ain't fell off yet? Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was gonna be the clip. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for watching this interview with me and Almighty. Let us know how y'all like it. Let us know if you fuck with it. Make sure you share, like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.